99% of developers don't get TPUs. Sure, the average Joe or first-year CS major can roughly describe what a CPU is with some ChatGPT assistance. A small chip on your motherboard that acts as the brain of your computer, registers a control unit for fetch, decode, and execute cycles, and an ALU for arithmetic and logical operations. The whole shebang. Fewer people know what a GPU is, a highly parallelizable specialized electronic circuit designed to accelerate gaming, video editing, and graphics-intensive applications. If you're one of the lucky, pardon my French, bastards that held NVIDIA stock back in pre-2015 times, then you definitely know that GPUs are the sole reason why you are now a millionaire. The use cases of GPUs have expanded far beyond 3D graphics rendering into crypto mining, and then skyrocketed the stock to the moon due to the rise of AI workloads and generative AI. But the number of people who actually have a deep, low-level understanding of what a TPU is is likely equivalent to the number of times I've been told I am more gifted in programming than Linus Torvalds himself. If you don't have the intellectual curiosity to learn beyond what a vanilla CPU or GPU is, I'd recommend exiting this video with haste, like actually. In this video, I'm going to break down the concept of TPUs and distill it into an easy to understand and concrete way. The next time someone asks you what a TPU is, you can assert dominance on them and induce a certain level of imposter syndrome in them by explaining it with complete hubris. So, what is a TPU, really? A TPU, or Tensor Processing Unit, is a specialized processor built by Google specifically to accelerate machine learning workloads, especially deep learning. While CPUs are designed for general purpose tasks and GPUs excel at graphics and parallel operations, TPUs are designed with a single goal in mind, performing the massive matrix multiplications, convolutions, and tensor operations at the heart of neural networks in deep learning as efficiently as possible. TPUs are application-specific integrated circuits optimized around a narrow set of mathematical operations, which gives them massive efficiency gains in both speed and power usage for ML for both training and inference. Throughput is prioritized over latency, meaning TPUs aim to maximize the number of tensor operations per second, even if that means individual tasks experience some queuing or batching. But that begs the question, why not just use vanilla GPUs? GPUs are excellent for parallel computation, but they are still somewhat general purpose. Each chip contains numerous streaming multiprocessors, or SMs, which are core processing units within a GPU that handles the parallel execution of many threads simultaneously. Each streaming multiprocessor contains a collection of CUDA cores, or equivalent for AMD GPUs, responsible for executing instructions along with local memory, schedulers, registers, caches, and dedicated hardware for graphics like texture units. Multiple streaming multiprocessors work together on a single GPU to process workloads. This single instruction multiple thread, or SIMT, design means that the GPU can break down large datasets into smaller parts to perform the same mathematical operation on many data values simultaneously. It's very effective for graphics, but much of that silicon is wasted if you only care about deep learning. TPUs strip away this overhead, replacing the flexible streaming multiprocessors with a dedicated matrix multiplication engine that performs matrix math far more efficiently than a GPU's general purpose cores. So now, let's dive into the TPU's core architectural principles. Starting with systolic arrays, the beating heart of TPUs. So what is this? The TPU's central feature is the 2D systolic array, also known as matrix multiplication units, or MXU. It's essentially a grid of small arithmetic units, or multiply-accumulate units. Think multipliers and adders arranged in rows and columns. Data flows rhythmically through the array. Inputs, such as activations and weights, are streamed in from opposite edges, and partial results flow across the grid, and final results emerge at the other end. This design enables efficient matrix multiplication. So recall that in a neural network, the weight matrix contains the numerical weights that determine the strength of connections between neurons in different layers, acting as the network's learning parameters that it adjusts during training. The activation matrix, or vector, represents the output values of neurons in a layer after they have been processed by an activation function. It signifies what the network has learned. These multiply-accumulate operations form the backbone of operations in neural networks. A multiply-accumulate operation is a fundamental computational step where two numbers are multiplied and their product is then added to a running total, the accumulator. This sequence of operations represented as a equals a plus x times y is especially core for performing the convolution operations crucial for tasks like image recognition. And these multiply-accumulate units are the hardware that perform these operations efficiently. Okay, but coding gopher, why does this actually matter? It avoids frequent memory accesses, which is a major bottleneck in CPUs and GPUs. But how? 
It's because the design maximizes data reuse and local communication between processing elements in motion. Instead of fetching the same data multiple times from memory, the weights and activations, or the systolic data, flows through the array and is reused as it passes by each unit. This dramatically reduces memory bandwidth bottlenecks, which are often the limiting factor in GPUs. So the TLDR is it reduces power-hungry memory traffic and maximizes throughput. Just as a contrived example, imagine multiplying a 256 by 256 weight matrix by another 256 by 256 input matrix. Instead of repeatedly loading rows or columns into a GPU core, the TPU streams rows and columns into the systolic array once, and all the intermediate multiplications cascade through the grid, producing outputs in a flowing pipeline. Now let's talk about the TPU memory hierarchy. The performance of a TPU heavily relies on its specialized multi-level memory hierarchy designed to prevent the powerful compute cores from stalling while waiting for data. This is critical because deep learning workloads are often memory bound as opposed to compute bound. The hierarchy consists of two main components. First, the high bandwidth memory, which is the TPU's primary external memory. Unlike conventional DRAM, high bandwidth memory achieves massive throughput by stacking memory modules vertically. It stores the bulk of a model's parameters or weights and activations, enabling the use of larger models and batch sizes. Its high bandwidth is essential for constantly feeding the compute units. And then the on-chip SRAM, or unified buffer, is the smaller, extremely fast, volatile memory located directly on the TPU chip. It functions as a staging area or scratch pad for data, like local weights and intermediate results, that is being actively processed by the systolic array. By caching data close to the compute units, it minimizes trips to the slower high bandwidth memory. Data flows from the large capacity high bandwidth memory to the fast on-chip SRAM buffers and finally into the systolic array's internal registers for computation. This system differs from that of GPUs, which use caches designed for more general purpose workloads. Just as TPUs are optimized to handle complex AI workloads efficiently, building AI applications also requires cutting edge tooling that performs reliably in the real world. This is where a truly innovative platform and the sponsor of today's video, Impromptu.ai, comes into the picture. Impromptu is designed to solve this exact last mile problem of AI accuracy and deployment. It is not just another chatbot wrapper. It's a true no-code AI application builder for creating sophisticated, production-ready applications. The core of their platform is what they call dynamic AI response optimization. This isn't a single black box, it's an integrated system that automatically manages the most complex parts of AI development. It intelligently combines crucial technologies like effective retrieval augmented generation, automatic model selection for your specific task, and the underlying production infrastructure. This holistic approach is what allows apps built on it to achieve up to 98% accuracy right out of the box. So how does this optimization work in practice? Instead of leaving you to figure out the hard parts, Impromptu builds a complete full-stack AI application where these components work together. Every app comes with the best fit model, RAG for accessing your live data, and intelligent processing built in. This ensures every response is contextually aware and highly accurate. The platform includes enterprise-grade controls and evaluation frameworks, allowing teams to define success and let the system automatically work to hit those targets without needing a dedicated ML team. You can simply describe the application you want in natural language, and Impromptu's AI agents can handle the entire development pipeline from logic and data ingestion to the user interface. Impromptu is ideal for developers or businesses that are under pressure to execute an AI strategy but lack specialized engineering teams. The result is a platform that lets you go from an idea to a production-grade AI application in days, not months. If you are tired of the complexities of fine-tuning and want to build AI that actually works in the real world, check out what they are building. You can learn more about their platform in the description down below or the pinned comment. Now back to the video. How about scalar and vector units? While the systolic array is the TPU's core feature, it's not capable of handling every type of operation needed in a deep learning workload. That's where scalar and vector units come into play. These are additional units that complement the systolic array. Remember that the systolic array accelerates bulk tensor multiplications. The scalar units handle simple single value operations such as index calculations, loop counters, conditional branching, or other control flow tasks. These are critical for orchestrating execution but are not performance intensive compared to matrix math. Think of the scalar core as the control unit of the TPU. It fetches and dispatches all instructions and executes transfers from high bandwidth memory into vector memory and can be programmed to do scalar metadata work. Vector units are designed for general mathematical operations on 1D arrays of numbers. Think element-wise additions, multiplications between vectors, activations like ReLU, Sigmoid, and Softmax, or layer normalization. These tasks don't map well to matrix multiplications but are still common in machine learning pipelines. The vector processing unit, or VPU, is the TPU's vector arithmetic core. 
It consists of a two-dimensional SIMD vector machine. This tripartite division of systolic array, vector unit, and scalar unit ensures that no single type of workload dominates the chip. It also highlights an important TPU design philosophy. Optimize the 95% case, or matrix multiplications, but still include general purpose units to cover the remaining 5% of a regular computation. This avoids bottlenecks where you'd otherwise need to move data off the chip to do small operations. So think of it as the glue that keeps the main matrix operations useful for actual neural network layers, not just math in isolation. Here's the key takeaway. TPUs are actually pretty simple. They load weights from high bandwidth memory into vector memory, then from vector memory into a systolic array which can perform around 200 trillion multiply adds per second. The high bandwidth memory to vector memory and vector memory to systolic array bandwidths set fundamental limits on what computations TPUs can do efficiently. Training a giant model like Palm or Gemini requires splitting both the model weights and the training data across thousands of chips. TPU pods are engineered to make this kind of training feasible at scale. This architecture allows TPUs to achieve order of magnitude improvements in performance per watt and per dollar for ML compared to GPUs, which is why nearly all Google scale models like Gemini, Palm, AlphaFold, and TensorFlow workloads are trained on TPUs and not GPUs. One very important concept to touch on is this notion of deterministic compiler-driven execution. Think of it as static scheduling. Unlike CPUs or GPUs that do a lot of dynamic scheduling such as branching and caching, TPUs rely on the XLA compiler to plan ahead. XLA just stands for Accelerator Linear Algebra Compiler. This includes what data goes into the systolic array, when should it be streamed, how should memory be tiled and reused, Code that runs on TPUs must be compiled by the XLA compiler. XLA is a just-in-time compiler that takes the graph emitted by an ML framework application and compiles the linear algebra, loss, and gradient components of the graph into TPU machine code. The rest of the program runs on the TPU host machine. The XLA compiler is part of the TPU VM image that runs on a TPU host machine. The result of this is that the hardware can be much simpler. No speculative execution, no branch prediction, no complex cache hierarchy, leaving more silicon for raw math. So there's a drastically simplified control flow. TPUs offload the control logic such as branching, scheduling, and memory orchestration to the software or compiler. The hardware itself remains laser-focused on dense linear algebra, unlike CPUs or GPUs that must juggle many workloads. This design philosophy makes TPUs extremely domain-specific accelerators. Let's deep dive into the architecture of the TPU. Starting with the Tensor Core, this is the primary processing unit handling the bulk of the computational acceleration. Each TPU chip contains one or more, and the exact number varies depending on the TPU chip version, for example V3, V4, V5E, or V5P. Next, let's take a look at the Scalar Unit. This unit handles control flow, calculates memory addresses, and manages other essential housekeeping operations. And then the Vector Unit. The Vector Processing Unit, or VPU, and Vector Memory, or VMEM, together form the Vector Unit. The Vector Unit is used for general computations that are not matrix multiplications, such as activation functions and softmax. Next, let's take a look at MXU, or the Matrix Multiply Units. So MXUs are the workhorses, providing the bulk of computational power. They are structured as systolic arrays of multiply accumulators. And a systolic array is a design that connects thousands of multiply accumulators directly, forming a large physical matrix that is optimized for the multiply accumulate operations central to matrix processing. Next, we have the high bandwidth memory. This provides fast access to memory for the TPU. And finally, inner chip interconnects. As the name suggests, this is a proprietary Google technology that enables seamless communication between multiple TPU chips. Now let's talk about scaling up from chips to pods and slices. While a single TPU chip is powerful, real-world AI models often require even more compute. This is where things like TPU cubes, pods, and slices come in. Starting with the TPU cube, a cube is a physical unit that contains 64 chips. It's a 4x4x4 topology of interconnected TPU chips. This is only applicable to 3D topologies beginning with TPU v4. They're also known as a rack, and this segues perfectly into TPU pods. A TPU pod is a collection of TPUs that are physically grouped together and connected by a specialized high-speed network. The total number of TPU chips within a pod varies by TPU version. Imagine a data center as a city. A TPU pod is like a dedicated, super-fast neighborhood within that city designed specifically for AI compute. And then comes the concept of a slice. A slice is a subset of chips within a single TPU pod, all connected by incredibly fast inter-chip interconnects or ICIs. A TPU slice refers to any group of TPUs ranging from four chips up to the size of a superpod. 
These high-speed interconnects allows chips within a slice to communicate with each other at lightning speeds. It also allows TPUs to form pods with thousands of chips. So the main distinction is that a TPU slice is a flexible kind of abstract unit, unlike a TPU rack or a TPU pod, which represents fixed physical units of measurement. Let's continue the city analogy. If a TPU pod is a neighborhood, then a slice is like a tightly integrated block or a cluster of interconnected buildings within that neighborhood, where information or data can be shared almost instantly between the residents or chips. And this diagram perfectly illustrates the spatial relationship between the pod, the slice, and the cube. By minimizing off-chip memory access and avoiding unnecessary general purpose hardware, TPUs achieve much higher flops per watt. Flops just stands for floating point operations per second, which is a metric for measuring the computational power and speed of AI hardware and models. It quantifies how many calculations involving decimal numbers or floating point numbers a system can perform in a single second. The essence of TPU architecture is a hardware software co-design that strips away general purpose flexibility to focus entirely on dense tensor math. TPU systems are built from individual chips containing matrix multiply units or MXUs and scale up to pods which are collections of TPUs, slices which are subsets within pods, and even across data centers with multi-slice, each leveraging high-speed interconnects for efficient communication. If you want to learn how to build Docker, Redis, and compilers from scratch, check out CodeCrafters down below. And if you want my recommendation on the best, true, no-code AI application builder for creating sophisticated production-ready applications, check out impromptu.ai using the link in the description and pinned comment. As always, thank you very much for watching, and happy coding.